not a New Year's resolution, but the past couple weeks I've been sticking to Whole Foods. Just drinking nothing but water and staying to stuff that's closest to the earth, if you will. Like uh, fruits and nuts and meat. Not a whole lot of meat because I can't eat much meat. Salads. Natural fruits and vegetables feel a whole lot better. Also, too, been up in my mega dose of vitamin C, and do feel a whole lot better. Been incredibly busy lately. Um, I have an article in the link below um, description for you. you know, it would be like ten pages if it was in a normal pitch font with normal borders, but I love to write articles in uh, small point pitch font, and also too. Um, in a very small borders, it just makes it easier for me anyway to write articles. So it's uh, right around four pages, and uh, I think you'll like it. And it's one thing people keep asking me to do, and of course I'm still working on the book on retroduction. And um, in this expanded article, which I had written uh, years ago, I greatly expanded it, and I've known these things about this particular topic. And it's a topic on disembodied uh, beings, and it's hyperlogical. We're not talking about any sort of radical, uh, because the notion of disembodied beings is a heavily loaded word that is used by most human beings, which is the word ghost. It's kind of lumped in the same uh, uh, stuff as like leprechauns and uh, unicorns. You know, it's something sort of, you know, quasi fantastical and uh, ludicrous. And I'm hyper logical, I mean, and I really am. I mean, I'm a Neoplatonic uh, Platonist. And uh, I apply whenever and wherever possible retroductive logic and platonic methodology for the rationalization and the understanding of things. Because metaphysics is not like something spooky or crazy. If I go to a bookstore, you go to the metaphysics section, it is full of a bunch of, well, let's say, new age malarkey, nonsense, and hooey. And I never engage, nor am I interested in any of that. But disembodied beings, if we actually remove the heavily loaded and highly jaded word, the G-H-O-S-T word, and just say disembodied being. We're talking about a signal after the breakdown of the radio. No one would ever deny that it had half a brain. The signals exist without the presence of radios. Don't take that analogy too far. But anyway, I greatly expanded upon this article and explaining the first person in the world, I can proudly say that, and I've known this for years, but I never included it in this article that I've written many years ago. I expanded on it and explained, using a very logical um, you know, platonic retroduction to explain this phenomena. One of them is about uh, cooling zones, whether they be stationary or moving. And this has been recorded using digital thermometers and whatnot by countless, literally countless thousands of individuals where you know, say it might be 72 degrees in a place, and you know, there's no wind moving from air ducts or heating systems or whatnot, no open windows, and there will be a zone. And I've actually encountered this before. Not recently, however, it will be extremely cold, and that spot will actually move. And I explained this um, very simply. And if you'd like to do that experiment, and this is something a lot of us actually did, maybe not you, and elementary school or high school, and I couldn't find a rubber band, but this is elastic, so it works the same. If you take a rubber band, try this yourself. You may, not, may, or, may or may not have done this before as a school child. You break the rubber band, and you hold it on either side here, and what you'll do is you'll put it against uh, your lip or your like upper lip, and as you actually expand it, you'll notice that it will greatly heat up. And as you uh, let it uh, contract, it will greatly cool down. And you need to understand the principles. And I can actually say I'm an expert on field theory. If you actually combine my knowledge on field theory, which is quite in extensive, no boasting or bragging here, with uh, my application of retroductive uh, logic, the lost uh, art of the Pythagoreans and the Platonists, combine those two things together, explaining logically these cold spots and whatnot of uh, disembodied beings, the, the current absolute consensus is, well, these beings, what they're doing is they're drawing energy from either people or the environment. That's completely both illogical, absurd, nonsensical, and ridiculous. Um, that would be like saying a fish is, uh, you know, inhaling air, which, of course, they don't. Uh, they don't do that. Neither does a disembodied being draw energy from the environment. But that's what all these people think, and we actually apply uh, platonic retroductive logic. We have to ask ourselves, and I explain this in the article, like I said, the, the link is below in the description, what these beings are, and they are, of course, disembodied beings, and there's an anode, 
effect. I don't know if you know this or not, but like an x-ray tube or a, um, a uh, one of J.J. Thompson's tubes, when the cathode heats up, the anode freezes, which is a fascinating phenomenon. But it's also true uh, in a battery to a lesser degree, and you can actually measure that. And of course, the, the anode is positive, the cathode is negative. The nature of these beings are is that they are of a counterspatial uh, nature such that they are by definition a manifest moving anode in uh, between uh, uh, spatial phenomena and uh, the counterspatial ether of which these beings are. They are literally like the positive terminal on uh, either a battery but more accurately like on an x-ray tube um, a moving anode which uh, freezes the positive terminal. So they're not actually drawing energy from uh, people or the environment. They are anodes. And I just use this as a simple analogy because you know everybody should do this if they've ever done that experiment before. Just like stretch a rubber band across your lip. It will heat up and as you contract it, it will greatly uh, you know, cool down. And it's uh, readily... I couldn't find a rubber band anywhere in my house. I know there's ones here somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Um, but it's the nature of the subject of which that entity is, such that they are an anode. Um, human beings, by their very nature, such that we burn energy and calories, we are a consubstantial being. Consubstantial being, being made of uh, spirit and matter, and of course we have to feed this engine. Of course it's a biological engine which burns calories and we give off heat. Um, it is biological retroduction also too. We can actually extend this and this is one of the magical things about retroduction is that with the application of this knowledge you can understand so many things in nature so very simply. Is that a living being by its very nature we are undergoing deterioration, the dissipation of energy. We can keep feeding ourselves but genetically we're burning out like a battery burns out. And uh, just like in an x-ray tube, you can look this up too. You just do a Google search, type in, uh, type in anode cools uh, versus uh, cathode heats up. You do that search on a Bing search or a Google search. That a human being or a living creature, which is a consubstantiality between matter and spirit, generates heat. We burn energy. We're burning ourselves out. Everybody does, whether we live 50, 60, 80, or 100 years. We're burning out battery. And biological retroductive thought, this falls completely in line with the phenomena and the nature of the phenomena, that it has a cooling effect because it is an anode being. It is an anodic being in counter space. It is not a spatial entity, but they're not drawing energy from, uh, um, from either living beings or from the environment, which is what all these people actually say and assume, but it's, that's hyper-illogical. It's completely nonsensical and it doesn't actually fit um, within uh, any form of superficial, simplistic, retroductive logic and applying what we know about the nature of a disembodied being, uh, that they would do that. It's completely ludicrous. But that explanation is very simple. I explain that in a couple of other phenomena in the article. And people say, why did you write this article? It seems too esoteric. Well, I mean, superficially it is. I mean, that G-H-O-S-T word is extremely loaded and for the minds of most people, 95% of the world, you know, you put that word right alongside unicorns and leprechauns, like some sort of fairy tale family. I don't believe in, as most people will say, I don't believe in that. Well, who cares what you believe in? I mean, that's not what's important, is what is irreducibly logical. And uh, also, too, uh, I put some other stuff I won't mention. I'd like for you to read it. I can drone on endlessly about what I added into the article. It's not that big of an article. Um, but uh, I hope you like it. And people, the reason why I wrote it and expanded on it and explained uh, uh, some unknown phenomena about that, which is hyperlogical. It's not something esoteric or fanciful, you know, like someone about guessing how big a fairy is or, you know, how many warts does a leprechaun have. I mean, just crazy musings. I mean, the phenomena, and of course it's actually noumena, but I mean, the phenomena that we uh, see this manifest is not illogical. There's nothing within, and by the way, all science came from Plato, Pythagoras, and Aristotle, the Aristotle scientific method. These people, there is no distinction between physics and metaphysics. They're just the head side of a coin and the tail side of a coin. There is absolutely in true metaphysics, vis-a-vis -vis the Platonists, Neoplatonists, and Indians, and some others, there is nothing illogical 
fantastical or um, you know hocus pocus or you know you know the crazy nonsense that you find in the metaphysics section of a bookstore which is just a bunch of stuff that should really be thrown in the trash to be honest with you I mean there's nothing anybody should read it has no connection to reality it's just it's hokum you know it's hogwash snake oil nonsense I think you know where I'm going with that so I hope you like the article it's no one's written an article about that topic applying uh, hyper-rational uh, platonic uh, um, deduction and reasoning to uh, true phenomena. And to what people believe one way or the other is not important. I mean, these entities exist. And uh, knowing metaphysics is not something different than physics. It is literally just the flip side of the coin, as I just got done saying a few minutes ago. So... If you're interested in uh, cosmic mechanics, as Plato, Pythagoras, Aristotle, and countless others were, then you want to know both sides of the coin. Some people only study physical phenomena. You know, they slice it up and they stick it in a microscope. And that's all that they know. And that's all well and fine. But a true rounded person interested in the, the totality of cosmic mechanics, what is and what is not, and how the universe works, is interested, as the greatest and wisest minds were, definitively, undeniably, interested in both physics and metaphysics, which are, in totality, a holos, just a one. You know, a coin is not a head or a tail, it's the coin, and the silver of the coin. Um, so these are not two different things. So anyway, I hope you liked the article, and I will stop flapping my lips. And Happy New Year! Goodbye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>